unique and retrogressive for anybody to trivialize the lives of Kenyans, even one Kenyan. And I condemn in the strongest terms any person who would attempt to do so. I appeal to the media not to slight these matters. And I appeal to our enforcement agencies to arrest social media users. It is wrong and that it should not happen. The current global reality is that close to one million people have so far been infected and 47,000 people have lost their lives. As we speak, Italy has recorded 110, 574 cases with 13,155 deaths. Spain has recorded 104, 118 cases with 9,000 387 deaths. Today, I'm also saddened to announce that we have lost an additional two patients who were tested positive to the disease, one in Nairobi and another in Mombasa. This now brings to three the number of deaths of those who have tested positive to the virus in the country. In spite of all this, I'm also pleased to announce to you that the Deputy Governor of Kilifi County, whom we place under mandatory quarantine, has fully recovered. He has been declared fit after being subjected to three tests, all of which have turned negative. Naturally, the issue of the law will now follow up with him. If you may recall, I informed you that this week we have embarked on a mass testing of 2,050 people that we place under mandatory quarantine in various hotels and designated government facilities. This exercise is continuing. In the last 24 hours, we have managed to test a total of 662 samples. You will notice that this is a new record in terms of our daily testing capacity. This is because of activation of testing facilities across the country and additional testing facilities in private facilities. Out of the 662 samples, 29 people have tested positive to the coronavirus disease. Out of this number, 28 are Kenyans, while one is a Congolese. This now brings the total number of those who have tested positive for the disease in the country to 110. Let me also add at this point that part of the disappointment is those who claim that they do not know anybody. I had a personal experience of people saying that they have no, that this is not true, it is not serious, because those in the, they, have, they do not know of anybody in their area who has either died or been uh, or, or been uh, tested positive to the disease. And I want to say, this is precisely the effort we are trying to make. The effort is to ensure that you do not hear of a death and you do not hear of a positive case. It is because you do not have a positive case, because you have not heard of a death near you, is the reason why you should be absolutely careful. 
Please do not, do not wait to hear of a death near you for you to realize that the disease is not a joke. By the time you are hearing of a death near you, it could, be, it, could be, it could well be your own death. And of course, you won't hear. We have placed the 29 people that uh, I said into our isolation facilities and also the distribution of the new cases according to the facilities of admission are as follows. The Aga Khan Hospital recorded three. These are the people who tested positive. People who went to Aga Khan, three of them, in quarantine at the Crown Plaza Airport, 11. At the Four Points Sheraton, one. KISE, two. KTI Nakuru 2, KMTC 5, Kenyatta National Hospital 1, Mathari 1, Nairobi Hospital 1, and uh, Pride Inn 2. This also tells you that those in quarantine, I am also appearing to those in quarantine to keep social distances. In fact, if there are people who should be keeping social distances, it is those in quarantine, because you are quarantined with people who themselves could easily be positive. So if you are in a quarantine facility, please keep serious social distance. Keep serious social distance. In terms of gender, there are 13 additional males and 16 females. 23 of the confirmed cases were detected in the designated quarantine facilities, 23, while six are from suspected cases admitted in isolation units. The ages of the confirmed cases range from 16 to 64. Fellow Kenyans, I seek that you remain calm I do not wish to scare you, but with the figures I have just read to you, there is no gainsaying that this is a very serious threat to our lives and to our nation. This number, I must say, is going to rise, and it is going to rise exponentially. It is important for us to note that this virus does not move by itself. It is moved by you and I. We must change our behavior and attitude if we are to cut the transmission of the virus. Indeed, when you think about it, had we not placed the people who are currently now in quarantine, had we not placed them in mandatory quarantine, when we did, the story would be fairly different, as you can tell from the figures. Arising from these trends, the government is now announcing stiffer measures to deal with the disease. As of now, I urge you to take extreme precautionary measures wherever you are, by observing the highest standards of hygiene, social distancing, as well as other measures we have announced. I want to reiterate that we are discouraging mass movement of people. Especially, we are completely discouraging the movement of those staying in Nairobi to upcountry places. I cannot emphasize more the need for you to prepare yourself not to travel upcountry going forward, whether it is for Easter holidays or any other reason. The only people who we keep saying can move up and down are cargo, particularly food, food trucks. 
because those ones must continue moving in order for us to protect the food chain in Nairobi. So I want to reiterate that even when you are in Nairobi, unless, and, 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 uh, unless there is something you are doing, unless there is absolute need for you to be outside your house, we encourage that you stay at home. And it is important for us to start training ourselves to do so. It is better to train yourself to stay at home rather than get a shock when push, came to, push comes to shove and you have to. So I would propose that people train themselves to self-quarantine and to self-distance from other people. As I directed earlier this week, all border border riders and their passengers with only one must wear protective masks. I further direct that all tuk-tuk drivers, all matatu drivers and their passengers within the matatu should begin are advised to adhere to this directive. If you are getting into a matato, you are advised to wear a mask. If you are going to ride a tuk-tuk, you are advised to wear a mask. Beginning today, we have begun local production of uh, the face masks. We, have also, we are also beginning to make PPEs for our health workers. We have now passed the tests of making them locally. But as for the mass, we are going to distribute through the counties and the chairman of border borders and the chairman of matatos what we are currently holding. However, going forward, going forward, it will be possible for you to acquire the masks and cheaply too. After my presentation, I am going to ask uh, the acting DG for health to explain to you the materials that can be used even by tailors at home under the directives and the ways that you are going to be advised on how to make face masks. It is not all materials. It, it is not all clothes that can make a face mask. So it, you'll be advised how to do this. Those making them are advised to sell them very, very cheaply, very, very cheaply, because they are mass productions, and they cost very, very little in the cents, not in the shillings. I take this opportunity to thank those in county governments that have scaled up precautionary measures through land screening at their borders, among other measures. I urge all the counties to heighten their level of preparedness. Towards this end, the government has interacted with immediate effect that the hiring of 5,000 skilled health workers across the county begin immediately and with the aim of finalizing the hiring in the next seven days. Counties who have already submitted their requirements and we have advertised these respective uh, jobs should complete the process by Wednesday of next week. Similarly, hospitals who have given their requirements, level four, level five, level six hospitals, Kenyatta, KU, are all required to continue hiring. And we wish that in the next seven days, the hospitals too will have hired an, an additional 1,000 health workers. This means, ladies and gentlemen, that at least an additional 6,000 health workers will be in place to help fight against this pandemic. At the same time, we have asked the county commissioners, we have asked the head teachers of the schools involved in boarding facilities, we have asked those involved in the preparation of food in those boarding facilities 
to start planning, to start planning ahead for any eventuality. We would like to see, depending on the population of the county, an additional 1,000 uh, bed capacity as quarantine facilities in boarding schools and in hospitals. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Kenyans, I cannot emphasize enough and I cannot repeat enough that we take this matter seriously. Let's not trivialize anything. I ask the media, please, please, we urge you and we ask you, through you, this matter can be taken seriously or through you, people can easily begin to make it like a joke. And if they do, we will pay a very high price. I thank you. Ningimbika kuongeza kidogo. Bila nimesema ni ya kwamba leo hii watu wale ambao wameumbukizwa na hii viruzi wamepita 100, wamefika 110. Hii ni kumaanisha ya kwamba a virusi iko kila pahali katika nchi yetu ya Kenya. Na mimi ningetaka kuwasihi wale ambao wanazungumza katika mitaa na wanasema ya kwamba hii hakuna virusi kwa sababu hawajui mtu yeyote ambaye ana virusi wala hawajui mtu yeyote ambaye amekufa ama ameuawa na hii virusi. Ya kwanza ni kwamba wewe hujui ni nani ako na hii virusi. Hata dugu yako na dadako, hata bibi yako Hata bwanako anaweza kuwa ashaambukizwa. Na sisi hatutaki wewe ujue mti yeyote ambaye ameuawa na virusi. Ndio sababu sisi tunasema yale tunasema na kuwahimiza watu wafanye vile serikali inasema. Ndio sababu ndio tusifikie hapo. Tunataka wewe usije ukapata mtu yako ama rafiki yako ama e, mtu wa familia yako ambaye amekufa. Kwa hivyo usije ukasema ati virusi hakuna kwa sababu wewe ujui nani amekufa ama ujui mtu amekufa. Hapana jameni. Hapana. Mimi na kusihi jikinge ndio usiwe isije ikawa wewe mwenyewe ambao unasema ujui nani amekufa wewe mwenyewe ndio umekufa hakuna mchezo hii virusi sio mchezo ya pili tumeongeza ya kwamba wale wanahudumu wa matukuk boda boda matatu tunataka sasa muanze kutumia hii vitambaa ya uso kwa sababu ni watu wengi zaidi sasa wamepata hii virusi na ukiingia matatu bira kitambaa ienda ukawa wewe utaambukizwa katika hiyo matatu ukiwa wewe ni muhudumu wa ni hudumu una huduma hudu, pikipiki na unabeba watu wengi zaidi kila siku huwezi kujua nani abiria wako ameumbukizwa na nani hajaumbukizwa kwa hivyo tugewasihi pia vile vile muendelee kufanya hivyo tutapatiana siku mbili ambazo katika hiyo siku mbili tutawaletea hizo hizi vitambaa na zingine zinaundwa katika vijiji hapa tu katika e, Kenya na daktari yataeleza ni vitambaa gani inaweza kutumiwa na hiyo kazi hiyo siku mbili ikiisha basi serikali ni lazima ingilia hiyo maneno na kuona ya kwamba hakuna mtu atabebwa na pikipiki ama abebe na pikipiki bila kutumia kitambaa ama kuingia matatu bila kutumia kitambaa na tunajua kuna wale watasema sasa nyinyi mnakuwa wakali sana mna sasa mnaanza ku, kutusukuma sana jameni tunataka Tunataka wa Kenya waishi. Ndio sisi tunafanya hiyo maneno.
tunapo tutaongeza tuta tunaendelea kuongeza vile serikali itasaidia watu na kupima watu na tutapeleka thermoguns ile ni ile ya kupima temperature tutapeleka thermoguns kila pahali na kufunza hata askari wetu waanze kusitumia ndio ukisimamishwa pahali na traffic unapimwa unekana temperature imepanda juu sana basi unasimamishwa na unapelekwa pahali tunaweza kuangalia kama wewe una virusi so the government is taking further measures as i said and i have urged and asked our citizens waanze kuji, kuji, kujikinga jitayarisheni mujitayarishe wale ambaye walikuwa nataka kwenda ushago wakati wa christmas wakati wa wa pasaka wakati wa pasaka sio christmas wakati wa pasaka wale walikuwa nataka kwenda nyumbani kusalimia wazazi tafadhalini tafadhalini kaeni hapa hapa Nairobi hata wale wanatembea sana kutoka kaunti kwenda kaunti ingine sasa tungetaka kukwamisha mambo ya kutembea wewe kaa pahali ulipo ukiwa kaunti ya Nyeri jaribu sana ukae huko ukiwa kaunti ya Kisumu ama pahali pengine jaribu sana uzoee anza kuzoea kukaa pahali ulipo kwa sababu tukifika kiwango fulani basi itatubidi kila mtu akae nyumbani kwa, na, na vile tunaweza kuzuia hiyo maneno ya kila mtu akae nyumbani ni watu wajikinge na wafanye vile serikali inasema asanteni sana only two questions today only two questions directive on the masks and the PPE. So the first one is uh, going by the numbers that you've given yesterday and today uh, and the cases being imported versus the directive on the masks. Is it that there was a gap identified in having people in mandatory quarantine uh, and therefore the directive on everyone to wear the masks or is it that as a government or as a Ministry of Health you're unsure of the extent of the local transmission in the country? Thank you very much. Um, uh, my name is Patrick from the Sun newspaper. Uh, my question is, uh, has the government so far disposed the body of the uh, first patient who passed on at Aga Khan? If not, what is the way forward? And then what is the fate of the 25 counties that do not have ICU units? Okay, I am going to respond half-half uh, in both questions. And then uh, Dr. Amoth, in responding uh, to the other issues that we raise, will also address the issue of the body and also uh, the disposal and the protocols, those protocols. But on the issue of the, of the mass, Dr. Masi, what uh, we said earlier, that we move on these things on the basis of empirical evidence and therefore take measures in accordance with what we have observed. And the point is that um, the, there were, there are, the, the conflicting issues regarding the masks is that uh, there are those who put themselves in more danger by using masks. And Dr. Amos spoke to that issue last week, and I think he can expound on it even today. There are those who put themselves in more danger. But we have come to the conclusion as a Ministry of Health that nonetheless, it is, it is imperative, it is easier, it is still, it is a measure that is better done than not done, if you see what I'm, if you see what I'm saying. So we need to start practicing and knowing how to use masks. Also, practice elsewhere. As the disease is progressing, practice elsewhere is that masks do help if you know how to use them. They help if you know how to use them. If you don't know how to use them, they can also pose a danger. And that's why we are saying that I uh, will speak to it. Um, the, uh, what was your question again? Yeah, disposal, yes. The issue of the disposal will be addressed by...
Dr. Amos, I thank you very much. On the ICU, on the issue of ICU, let's, 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 let's um, address this issue this way. ICU is the last resort, is the last resort to uh, treating anybody. And if you are a medical doctor, Dr. Massey, you can explain that to your colleague. Long before we get to ICU, there are very many things that have happened. And if you look at uh, the statistics, even globally, and even if you look at the areas where there are very many and severe cases, ICU is not where you start. Long before you get into a ventilator, we have, you have, we have isolated you, like the ones we have isolated, and managed their cases. After that, we go to provision of oxygen. After that is the only time you get to, the, to go into the I, ICU. So as much as uh, some counties do not have ICU facilities, we are building capacity to use even other facilities as ICU facilities. Thank you. I think I want to invite Dr. Amos to speak to all these issues. Thank you, Waziri. I think you have spoken very well about the issue of the masks. And uh, this is just an additional me measure that we are undertaking in order to ensure protection of the public. But that notwithstanding, of course, we'll still continue to harp on the need for uh, infection prevention control measures like the hand washing, the use of the sanitizers, and of course, the social distancing. The masks that we have distributed to you people, the media, is a three-layered mask, basically. And this is where we want to start local manufacturing. The outer layer is made of a material that is water repellent, also called hydrophobic. So if there's any spillage of blood or secretions, then it does not come into contact with you. If you cut the mask, a cross-section of the mask, there's a middle layer that has a filter. That filter is supposed to be able to pick particulate matter and bacteria and therefore stop you from inhaling the particulate matter or the bacteria. Then the third layer, inner layer, is the layer that absorbs, maybe if you are sweating or any secretions or any spit from you to the person maybe you are taking care of or the person you are, uh, you are talking to. So this is an additional measure that we have decided to deploy, especially in public facilities like the Matatus, and, and, and also any other person who can be able to lay his or her hands on a mask, if you are on a public place, there is no harm in using one. In terms of the body of the diseased patient at uh, Aga Khan University Hospital, we are in this discussion with the family. The body, we have done disinfection, we have uh, body bags, and as soon as they are able to clear with the hospital in terms of the bills, uh, and also in consultation with our health team in Transoya County, we shall be able to dispose of the body appropriately. The second case, the second uh, deceased person who died in Mombasa, actually plans are underway to ensure that the burial is done today. We have developed guidelines further to be able to help, to help the healthcare workers and members of the family, and also in liaison with the directive that was given earlier by Waziri, and the National Emergency Response Committee that funerals will only be attended by close family members uh, of 15 or less during the burial process. I think that answers the question. Uh, there is already local transmission in the country. What are we looking at? We are having pockets or clusters of transmission from various counties. We have out of the 100 plus cases, about 30 or 40 are cases of local transmission with no history of travel. Some of them no history of direct contact with anybody having a COVID-19 disease. 
So we are actually in the era of local transmission. This is NTV. Sensitivity is a short, sharp pain that people experience when